friend, it's me, Kylie, and I just finished making breakfast. Dax, pancakes are ready. What is your favorite thing to eat for breakfast? Here you go, buddy. What is the syrup? Oh, the syrup, I forgot it. That is the best part of pancakes. Not to worry, because look where we are. We're on a farm. Go see, I'll show you. And this isn't just any farm. This farm has animals and makes maple syrup from maple trees. Do you wanna come see more? Yeah. Let's do it. Kevin and Emily are the owners of this farm. So let's see if Kevin's in here and we can ask him if he has any extra syrup for us. I don't have a name for this one yet. That's a baby chick. Oh yeah, these are our egg layers. Wow, come look. I like all the different kinds of chicks. There's white, and this one's all black, and then there's gray with spots and light gray. How old are these chicks? Oh, unless, uh, they're two weeks old. Two weeks. And they're gonna lay blue and green eggs. How do you get the eggs from the chicken? We're gonna put them with the regular flock in about, a, about two months. Okay, out in the chicken coop. Then they're gonna hang out together and get used to uh, everybody. Okay. And then once they start laying, we just get them from the chicken coop or the egg mobile is what we call it. Egg mobile, I like that. It's a mobile uh, chicken house on wheels. Awesome. So we drag it around the farm, they do their thing, um, and we collect eggs every single night. Every single night? Yeah. And they're all different colors? Yeah, that's a cool thing. They help you by giving you eggs, and you help them by giving them food and a safe place to live. Oh, most definitely. That is so cool. Huh? These chickens are awesome. I have to ask you a question though. So this morning I was making pancakes for my friend and my family, and I ran out of syrup. I know this is a maple syrup farm, so I was wondering if maybe you had some extra, and along the way, if maybe you could show us how you make the syrup here. We can definitely show you how to make it, and we have plenty of syrup. Do you have any more animals you can show us along the way too? Oh, most definitely. Join us as we tour the entirety of Mill Gap Farms located in the beautiful mountains <gasps> of Virginia. We're going into the barn. There's turkeys, chickens, roosters, and alpacas in here. They are the cutest thing I've ever seen. Hi. What are you doing, Autumn? Who's this? That is Sonata. Sonata? She's been with us for about five years. And it looks like she just got a haircut. Well, it's been a little while, but yeah, she did get a haircut. It looks a little shorter. And who's this? That's Havana. That's, that's Autumn's mother. Oh, wow. She's a wonderful mom. Good job. Oh, I like how they chew. Their mouths go like this. <laughs> Who did you find, Dax? There's a rooster and some huge turkeys. Yeah. <gasps> a huge turkey. Whoa. Blinks are so interesting. Her she's eyelids two. are like. Just two. Oh. She's gonna turn on the next turn. Wow. Yeah, it's like a white flash. Mm -hmm. And it goes, um, our eyes go like down, hers go this way, it looks like. 
I can't. They come in from the upper. Yeah, they come in. Ten o'clock. Oh wow. That's so interesting. I like how that rooster walks. Can you do your best rooster walk? Yeah, you gotta swing your face. Okay, show me. She weighs about 30, 40 pounds. Wow, that's how much Dax weighs. <laughs> what are you doing, turkey? Oh, are you eating some grass? Yeah. Is grass delicious? Oh, they're high. Turk, turkey, turk, 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 turkey. I don't know if that's gonna peck you hard, baby. So, oh! <laughs> What are you doing? Oh, you can pet him. Okay. Yeah. You are a strange looking creature. I love your colors. <laughs> Here you go. Go. <laughs> wow, and he puffs back up. There you go. Sheepy. <laughs> How do you call a sheep? Most of them are. They are. <laughs> wow! Look at all these sheep! Do you have a favorite sheep? Yeah, it's 27. 27's your fave? Aw. Come here, sweetie. What are you doing? Aww. Her wow. name is Sprightly. Sprightly? Oh, I love her curly hair. Hi. Okay, let's try to have a sheep conversation with the sheep. Um, Dax, what should we try to say to him? Um, and you should go over to his other friend. Excuse me, sheep? I think that she was listening to me because her ears went back. Wait, that's, wait are you actually saying it? I don't know. I'm trying my best. Do you understand? Do you understand what I'm saying? You do? <laughs> <laughs> the sheep just licked my elbow. I don't know how I feel about it. You have to wash it. <laughs> you have to definitely wash it. We don't like it. <laughs> so what do you have to do to take care of these sheep? You've got to shear them once a year. Okay, give them a haircut. You've got to give them food in the winter. <laughs> okay. Give them grain. And then every now and again, if they get sick, you got to treat them. Uh huh. Until they get better. So they go into the barn where they'll stay for however long they need to stay until they get healthy, and then they come back out and join the herd. That's so amazing. Look, he's eating my shoelace. You untied my shoe. Are you doing a prank? No, he's got to lick you. Oh. Come to me, sheep. <laughs> what are those ones doing over there? We gotta get those ones back in the gate. Can I draw a picture of you? Okay. Let's see. Let's see. Oh. Hey. Hey. <laughs> hey, that's our sketchbook. Good job. <laughs> Their voices are so funny to me. They have different tones to their voice. Yeah. So you can tell when you have a baby and a mama's calling the baby or someone's in distress. It's kind of neat. Oh, whoa. this is more like I'm hungry, feed <laughs> that me. That one was bad. I like how they hop. Should we do our best lamb hop? Okay, let's see your best lamb hop. Oh! Oh, that's good. <laughs> the sheep and alpacas at Mill Gap Farms get regular haircuts. This is called shearing. Their fleece, which comes off once they get their haircut, is used to make yarn, which is then used to make some amazing art. Check it out. This is my friend, Emily, and this is her beautiful house. Thank you so much for having us in your home. Thank you for being here. I'm so excited, friend, because Emily is a really, really amazing kind of artist. She's a fiber artist, which means she makes 
this kind of thing. And she's gonna tell us all about her process, which actually goes beyond fiber artists into some really cool things. I can't wait for you to tell us. First, tell us about these that you made. So these are hand-woven uh, alpaca scarves. You're telling me that this scarf, this yarn, is made from my alpacas. So the alpacas we just met, you took their fleece, turned it into this. Yep. It doesn't smell like an alpaca. No, thankfully. <laughs> okay, will you please walk us through all of the steps? I wanna hear them all, don't you? Okay, okay, so you have an alpaca, it's hanging out, it's time to shear it. Yes. What do you do? So they are shorn once a year, kind of like a sheep. Does it hurt them? No. It's, it's like a haircut. It's a haircut okay. and it takes about five minutes. Do they like it? No. Oh. <laughs> so this is alpaca fiber. And now I did wash this so it's not stinky and dirty because some of it kind of gets gross. Okay, well, I'm okay um, with that. Can I touch it? Yes, you can. It is so soft. It is like a cloud. It is like I'm touching a cloud right now. Some of this is dyed, wow. dyed fibers. This is so beautiful. This reminds me of like a unicorn in the ocean. Oh, I like that. <laughs> That's what I would name this. Um, oceanic unicorn. Oceanic unicorn. Huh? So once we get it into our fiber bat, we take a spinning wheel and we spin our, we spin it into yarn. Okay, this is something I've heard about that I have never been able to watch someone do. Will you please show us? I will, I will gladly. Okay. I'm going to split it in half. And look at how nice and fluffy that is. Look at how fluffy. <laughs> like a cloud. And when I go from here, I will then tear it into strips. So this is our spinning wheel. Um, and what we will do is we will take our fiber. As I pedal, this will start to spin and it will add twist to the fiber constantly feeding it more and more, and this will fill up with my yarn. Is this something I could try? Yes, or? you can. Okay, I'd love to try it. I'd love to. Okay, so I should be way back here? Yeah, and pull it. Oh, okay. Yes. Keep going. So now we're taking our one ply that we just made, and we're going to spin it together to make it two ply. So basically, the one string is gonna become two wrapped together, which makes it a little thicker and stronger. Th definitely stronger. It's kind of like friendship. Friendship. <laughs> stronger together. Amen. I don't know why my head does this when I do it, but it does. Do making yarn, making two ply yarn. What is this contraption? So this is a rigid heddle loom. A rigid heddle loom. So you weave on this. Okay, cool. How was this set up? Like what? A... Huh? <laughs> <laughs> so this is my warp. Warp. Okay. So, so the warp is the long up part. And down vertically. Yes. So you get your yarn. You warp your yarn onto your loom, and then you weave your weft. So once it's on here, all it is is passing your yarn through. So with weaving, you want your fibers to cross. So that's what this does. When you come up, the these fibers in the little holes come up. Oh, okay. So you would pass your yarn through. Oh, like go through the tunnel. Go through the tunnel, yup. And you beat it down. But now we're gonna go down. So now our fibers just flop. So now this one that we just put through is held in there. The warp. what was on top is now on the bottom. Switched. Okay, cool. So it overlaps every time. Okay. But this is all it is. All it is. There's so many steps. What are you talking about? You, this 
This art tells me so much about who you are. I've learned something. Friend, <laughs> tell me if you agree. This is a person who loves her animals, who takes care of the details, and who's in it for the long haul. Amen. I feel like you can tell a <laughs> lot about people based on the kind of art they make, and I love the kind of art you make, Thank Emily. you, thank you, thank you. I do, too. I love this farm, and I love this place. Do you want to go see more of it? All right, let's do it. Well, friends, we got a long day on the farm today, just using this tractor to feed the animals. Right, Dax? Yeah. Oh, Dax, watch out! Driver. Who taught you how to drive a tractor? Look at all these ducks and cows coming in. These are some Peking ducks, we have some mallards, and then the cattle are Daisy. Jersey's right here. Okay. Neko. We have Eddie and Opie. <laughs> Opie's the red one. Sirloin, which is right over there. That's <laughs> sirloin. Hi, nice to meet you. Oh, wow. Thank you so much for showing us all your amazing animals. They are so cool. Oh, you're most welcome. It was a lot of fun. Yes. Yeah, so now can we see how the maple syrup is made? In order to do that, we got to go to the top of the mountain. Um, okay, let's do it. <laughs> let's, go. let's go. What is this thing called? Side by side. I already love it. We call them side by side. Yeah. They're a lot of fun. Let's ride. Kevin, first of all, that was a really fun ride. <laughs> it's really fun. It's a good morning commute, I'll yeah, tell you that. That's much better than just like driving a car. Oh, yeah. um, secondly, what are we looking at here? I see a lot of string. There's a lot of lines. Um, we call them lines. Okay. Tubing. Um, oh, it's tubes. Size, different size tubes. So it's hollow inside. Oh yeah, these go from, we're here at the top of the mountain and they go about a couple of miles down the mountain into the barn. So we have different size tubing. This is a one inch main line. Okay. And on this particular line, these little lines are all attached to it. And then the water comes from the tree, goes into the little line, goes into the big line, goes down to the barn, and we make maple syrup. And then into a bottle, and then onto my pancakes, and then in my belly. That's exactly right. Okay, cool. Exactly right. <laughs> With a couple steps in between. So what? trees can you tap? <laughs> so we tap only maple on this farm. Okay, maple trees. Maple. So how do you tell what a maple tree is, especially in the winter when it doesn't have leaves on it? So something that all maples have is this branching right here. If we look at this branch, and you can look at it right here. A branch comes out here, comes out here. A branch comes out here and comes out here. If we go to the branch that came off, they're called horizontally opposed. So they're gonna come out at the same point. Now, if we look over at this tree over here, you notice how you got a branch here? Yeah. And But you don't have one here, but you do have one here. What kind of tree is this? I have no earthly idea. Huh? It's not a maple. It's definitely not a maple. I just realized something, Kevin. If we were trees, we would be maples or ashes because we're, we have horizontally opposed oh, that's exactly right. branches. Look, I'm not like this. So this is the main line, and all these little lines come right into here. Can you show us where these little lines attach to a tree? Sure. Let's walk up here. In season, it would look something like this. This is actually the tap. Oh. And the tap itself, on our farm, gets changed out every single year. And then we do our tap in where we drill a hole into the tree, and we actually insert the tap Tap, 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 tap. Is that why it's called a tap? Because it makes a tap when you tap it in? Exactly. Makes sense. It does make sense. <laughs> the water's gonna flow from the tree. It's gonna go down to the bottom. It's gonna take off and head that direction and get into the main line. That's cool. So it's kind of like you're putting, the tap is like a straw and then you like. Exactly. And it just takes some of the tree's sap. It doesn't take enough to hurt the tree. Oh good. But it gives us enough water to make maple syrup. So you're just 
taken a little bit. But, oh, a I, little bit from each tree. I see these holes. These are from taps from other years. Wow, this is amazing. All of these trees are coming together to make this amazing product that is delicious and beautiful and so tasty. Where are we going now? We're gonna head back to the barn. I'm gonna show you where the water goes into the barn and how we make the syrup. Okay, let's do it. Farmer Dax, walking up the driveway, Farmer Dax. Now that we've seen the whole thing up on the mountain, we're here at this barn. What happens in here? This is where we make maple syrup. So come on, let's go inside. Ooh, the magic happens in here. Whoa, this looks like a train. Choo choo. Huh? This thing's awesome. It's not a train. Oh. No, no. It's, it's an evaporator. An evaporator. And for us to understand how it's going to work, we got to go outside first. Okay, I want to understand the whole thing. It does look like a train, though. <laughs> We have a north side of the farm and a south side of the farm. There's two lines that come in. They both come in and go right into the big tank. Let me show you where that is. I see them. Oh, is that where they come in? Yep, the lines come in from the top, go into that small tank, and then it's filtered before it drops into the big tank. Okay, awesome, and this is the big tank? The big tank, it's 5,000 gallons of space. It fills up one to two times a day. We go into this room, Another tube. Another tank, another tube. This machine splits the water into minerals and sugar. Which will be the syrup. Will become syrup. Okay. And then there's a little water that is pulled off of it to make that concentration. And it goes from here over onto the top of the big tank where it's gonna gravity flow into the evaporator. So let cool. me go show you where it goes. Okay, awesome. This machine is gonna allow it to come in when it needs it, and it will then go through this entire machine and come out as maple syrup. So there's different sections of the machine. The back side is called the flue pan. Did you say floop or flue? Flue. Looks like your hand, and you'll have these pockets where the fire can go up and the syrup will go down inside of here. There's fire in here? Oh yeah, that's the fun part. <laughs> Have you ever helped your grown up make like spaghetti or noodles or something? You put a big bucket, pan, pot of water on the stove. It gets hot, it starts to boil, and what comes off of the top? Steam. Steam. That's the water changing form and rising out of your pot, which is exactly what this does, That's right? exactly what this does. It's another way to get water out. It is, at a very fast pace. You evaporate the water from the sap to a certain sugar content, and then it becomes syrup. So the first time you turned this on, were you scared inside? Oh, of course. <laughs> I had no idea. <laughs> what did you put your first maple syrup on? A spoon. A spoon. Huh? So it goes through this whole process like this, comes out here into a big pan, Yep. Is it big? A big pan. And then, because you're not gonna bottle it that day, you put it in a keg. Right there. Let's go look at them. Oh, cool. And these kegs, here's a sample of what's actually in this keg. Let me show you an early season, okay? This is an early season syrup. Okay. And you can tell because it's so clear. Yeah, And wow. it's so light. <laughs> this is a late season syrup. Whoa. Notice the two differences? Yeah. What do you think causes that? Let's see. Temperature? Yes. And no. Oh. So, <laughs> yes. It's weather. Weather. The key is the weather. To make dark syrup, it's got to be warmer days. Okay. To make light syrup, it has to be cold days. Okay. What's in the bottle tells the story of the weather that day and what was going on the farm that day. That's so cool. It's kind of like each bottle of maple syrup is like a journal entry from a tree. It's exactly Where right. This is telling a story. It's telling us that, oh, these trees were cold, but not too cold. And this is the color. And this is where they live. And everything about this place and those trees is right in this bottle. Exactly right. I love that. Let's get one of these things loaded up and bottle some syrup, okay? I think that'll be a lot of fun. Let's do it. The syrup is boiling, 
What is next? We need to check to see if it's actually syrup. So what we're gonna use is what's called a hydrometer, and this is a calibrated tool. And There's like weights on the... There is weights in the bottom okay. of it. Cool. And so it's gonna float once it is the right consistency. And you can look right there, you see that little red line? Oh, that's where we're trying to get to. See it? That's where we wanna be. So filtering maple syrup is done with a thing called diometaceous earth. Diometaceous earth. It's going to grab anything and will not let it pass through the filter press at all. So when the syrup comes out, it's going to be perfectly clear. So we're filtering the syrup. We're going to clean it out. And this is kind of like a vacuum cleaner. So that DE is going to make it kind of thick. So all the stuff that we don't want in our syrup is going to stick to it. And then it's going to go through here. And with that DE, it's too thick to pass through the paper. Only the syrup's going to do that. So it's going to get cleaner and cleaner and cleaner and cleaner and then syrup. So we're going to take these two bottles. Okay. Push it up. You'll do the same thing. Okay. Take your pedal, push it down. Make sure they're flat. Put your hands up here and then together push them down. Lift up. Move it over. Set it back down. Let it fill up. Stop. Okay. So we'll start you off, Carly, with one bottle. Okay, that sounds good. All right, friend, it's our time to shine. This is the bottle we're gonna fill. I am gonna put it on the slower one because it's our first bottle ever. So I have it lined up right under the nozzle. Dax has his feet on the foot pedal. We'll put our hands up here. We're gonna put our foot on the pedal and... Okay, go. <gasps> Okay, now he said to move it all over with hot. Do you remember, do we put it up and down or do we lay it on its side? Um, lay it on its side. Do you remember why? Because so, so we can see if it leaks. Yeah, so we can see if it leaks. Let's see if we got a good one that doesn't leak or if we have a problem to fix. How's it look, friend? Is it all lined up? Looks like the drip is there. Okay, how about this one? Looks like the drip is there. All right, hands up, feet down, let's go! Wow, this is so beautiful. I love this brown color. Oh yeah. What's it sound like to you? A toilet. <laughs> huh? Can you believe that this syrup came from what a tree uses to live. It drinks water up from the ground with its roots, and then it makes sap. That's carrying all the nutrients oh, for the tree. Oh, oh gosh, oh. <laughs> it's very hot, so make sure you have Pandrel. I have Pandrel. Yep, gotta have your grown-ups around. Yeah. If, when you're bottling maple syrup, check my lid, make sure it's tight enough. How's it feel? Feels good. Okay. Job. As I was saying, this came from what a tree uses to live. Wow! So when we tap the trees, we get that sap. And yeah. then it goes through this whole process where we're taking a lot of the water out so that we just get all this good sugary maple syrup. What kind of dance would you do if it was called the syrup dance? Mine would be like this. What kind of dance do you do after you have a ton of sugar? <laughs> what kind of dance do you do after all the sugar has worn off and you're crabby and tired? What? You never get tired? You just keep going? I know you do. I got our syrup! What an amazing day. We met so many cool animals. We learned all about maple trees, sap, maple syrup. We even got to see some amazing fiber art from Emily. This farm is amazing. Now, who wants pancakes? Hey! Dax, Isabel, Gabriel, where'd you come from? Let's go.
ever. Kevin and Emily are amazing and amazing cooks too. If you wanna watch more videos with me, just search for this channel, Kylie Makes It, K-Y-L-E-E. -E. That's me. See you soon.